Now, before I get into the meat of this video, let me start off with this, because it feels like I've got to put it out there, especially for the listening and or basic comprehension impaired. I do not want AEW to fail. Well, let me repeat that. I do not want all elite wrestling to fail. I want it to succeed. I want it to succeed as much as it possibly can and perhaps surpass what we have envisioned for it in terms of its ceiling. You might say, well, you're just going to crap all over because you hate Cody Rhodes. Yes, I hate Cody Rhodes. He's a lying piece of shit. That said, I can remove my emotions from it and think about things from a business perspective, unlike a lot of you and unlike Cody Rhodes, to sit there and see the bigger picture and understand this, that all elite wrestling failing does very little to nothing for me personally and for this channel. All Elite Wrestling being able to be established as a second viable brand that I could watch, that I could do reviews about, do commentary videos about, Q&A videos about, that has a tremendous benefit to me and this channel. I would much rather have that because even thinking about it, you know, one of the big things that's missing for me is the fact that Impact Wrestling, you know, back in the TNA days, several years back, even for all of its flaws, I still have that second product. It allows me to get my voice out there in front of new people that don't watch WWE, don't care about WWE, similar to what you would have with an All Elite Wrestling. It's a chance for me to spread wings. It is a chance for me to grow my scope, to grow my audience. Why in the hell would I not want that? In no way, shape, or form do I want this venture to fail because failure represents very little to no benefit to me personally and represents absolutely zero benefit to this channel. I hope that helps a little bit. And also, let me point out that just because you have questions or concerns or even some criticisms about a product does not automatically mean that you are just asking for it to fail or you're just looking to crap on it for the sake of crapping on it. I, I really worry sometimes when I see how wrestling fans interact with others and interact when it comes to wrestling as a whole, I really worry sometimes how wrestling fans are able to succeed in the professional lives and in the business world. It, it really worries me that you get so emotionally invested in your wrestling brand that you look for reasons to have to justify why you watch something to the point that if anything said, anybody says anything that is even remotely thought of, if even a constructive criticism, let alone a critique, let alone just a flat-out complaint, you guys go to kingdom freaking hell in your rage factor to fight back against it. And it's like, that's just not productive. It's not healthy. And if you do that in your regular everyday lives, I can't imagine how successful you would be. So that brings me to the whole point here of all elite wrestling. And we now know that they're going to be on starting October 7th, 2nd, excuse me, Wednesday nights, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time on TNT. They've got a two-hour block of primetime programming on a major cable station. That said, while that appears to be awesome and appears to be a really good thing and can potentially be, will they ultimately be successful on TNT? And I've got to be honest, I have a lot of questions and concerns about that right now. Number one, size of audience. Look. When you see what they've gotten in terms of viewership for some of their Fight for the Fall and the Fighter Fest before that, what was it, Double or Nothing, um, Bleacher Report Live, you know, especially the last couple that were free shows, the viewership numbers are good, but they're not support national prime time, two hours cable television every week good. When you're averaging a hundred-ish, a little bit more, a thousand people consistently watching you need a lot more to be able to justify the, the block of time, the time slot that TMT has given you every week. And even like going into it now in October, between now and October, how much are they really going to be able to grow their actual overall audience? To me, a reasonable expectation of what they might be able to draw in terms of viewership right now for that first episode 
might be somewhere between 400 to 600,000 viewers. Could be a little less, could be a little more. When you look at the special that was on WGN America before All In last year, they did just under 200,000 viewers. That's, that's an okay number, but not an incredibly good one. Granted, that was on Saturday night prime time um, without a lot of promo, without a lot of build, without a lot of marketing behind it. But still, you know, you're talking about going into the big leagues now, TNT, two hours prime time every week. And you're coming off of doing the Bleacher Report live streaming shows where you're maybe averaging 120, 130, 150,000 viewers consistently throughout it. And even if you say, going back to Fighter Fest, that you believe Meltzer's numbers, which are kind of concerning in and of itself just due to his sheer bias, and you say at one point in time you had over 300,000 people watching, well, even if you assume that to be true, where do the other couple hundred thousand of viewers come to be able to watch that first episode? Now, you could potentially have this first episode, October 2nd, really overperform. And it could do a million viewers. That is not out of the realm of possibility. But for a company without a lot of name recognition, for a company without a lot of history behind it, without any history of doing national primetime television in any way on any cable channel, that is an awfully big ask. And when you look at the size of the audience, how do you get to a point from going where you have maybe 200,000 people watching your pre-show on WGN a year ago to now all of a sudden you're going to get up to a million people? And especially because we're talking about professional wrestling and the lack of ability to get the advertising dollars that typically other types of shows would get based off of a viewership number that wrestling gets because of the fact of the stigma of professional wrestling in order to really be able to justify TNT giving All Elite Wrestling two hours of prime time television every week. You know, they're going to even probably have to go way above a million viewers down the road. They're going to have to get somewhere around 1.5 million viewers. And that is a long, long way away from the current reality of where All Elite Wrestling is at. And if you can't acknowledge that, then we've got a problem here because you are disconnected from reality. I'm not saying they can't get to that audience. I'm saying that there is a concern in my eyes that them starting off with TNT right out of the gate might be a bit ambitious for them. And in a few months, if they aren't giving a return of a million plus viewers every single week consistently, and they're not doing as well in the 18 to 49 demographic as they need to, you know, TNT is going to have to start having some conversation about whether or not they need to cancel the program. And then you might as well say good night, Irene, on All Elite Wrestling. Uh, number two, to me, another real concern I have about them being able to make it on TNT is their early marketing looks markish and kind of boring. Like, you see the pictures on Twitter, their photo shoot for TV Guide. I don't know if it's a ripoff from Friends or what the hell that's supposed to be. Like, your most recognizable names that you have currently associated with your brand are Jim Ross, Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose. Those are your three most notable guys. None of them are featured in the photo shoot. Jericho, who is actually wrestling for your world championship and may very well be your first world champion after that all-out show on August 31st, is nowhere to be seen in the promotional material. It looks like a bunch of marks sitting there and taking a bland-ass picture. That's exactly what it looks like. There is nothing about that that screams interesting. Like, imagine how stupid you would have to be to sit there and dress all of these guys up in a suit, give no hint that this is a wrestling-related show at all, and then you've got somebody as beautiful as Brandy Rhodes with all of the assets that she brings to the table, and you put her in a position in a picture where she's just sitting down and blending in with the crowd. Like, she should be in a position where she's standing up so you can emphasize just how beautiful she is. Like, this is just basic marketing 101 that these guys, Cody, the Bucks, you would think should get better, but they don't. Instead of emphasizing uniqueness or difference or emphasizing the characters or personalities that you had, if you didn't watch wrestling and you happen to stumble into this, there is nothing about that that looks interesting. That's nothing about that that says, my God, I've got to watch these guys. There's not even really anything about it that sits there and tells you that you even know what the hell it's supposed to be for. Like, why would new fans want to watch it? Ultimately, you can't survive 
off of the hardest of hardcore fan base that you have. You just can't. You have to be able to get new fans. You have to be able to get some disenfranchised fans from the past along with some different new fans. And I worry for guys like Omega, the Bucks, Cody, that have spent so much of their time living in that hardcore wrestling bubble where they don't have to go get new fans. They're just coming off of that same base. I'm not really sure that they can make that leap because, again, the perspective is going to change here. And it must change. It must change. And um, beyond that, like the next part of this, is building and maintaining a weekly national primetime wrestling television program is a lot different than doing one-off spot shows. I think everybody understands that. And when I look at All Elite Wrestling right now, you know, I have questions about what's your brand identity going to be? I don't know. Does anybody know? Like what truly is their brand identity? What are they about? And especially if they want to be counterculture to the WWE, what are they doing to truly be different or unique from WWE? I'll talk more about that in a minute. But again, dealing with guys like Cody and the Bucks and Omega, so much of what they've done in wrestling, especially recently, is all just based around the in-ring shit alone. You can talk about there being elite, the elite stuff on YouTube and blah, blah, blah. But that stuff doesn't necessarily translate to national primetime cable television and a two-hour wrestling show every week. What makes you think that these guys know how to tell stories and help other guys and gals tell stories? What makes you think that they understand character development? Because if you're looking at it objectively, Cody Rhodes, what the hell is unique or different about him? He sits there and uses as much of his dad and his half-brother's legacy as possible and blended himself into the Bullet Club in order to try and get himself over on the independent scene, and that's what he did, and good for him. But let's not change the fact that when you look at these guys, like, what is so unique about these guys? What really makes them characters? What makes them different? What makes them larger than life? Like, those are things you have to solve for. Those are things that you have to have plans for. And I just am concerned about their ability to do so. And then back on to the part about how are you going to be different from WWE? What makes you anything more than a glorified indie, indie fed with a big time production budget? Because that's exactly what the hell the WWE has become. They don't care about characters. They don't care about stories. It's just lazy crap. Let's put a bunch of matches out there because we got to try and save what little fan base we have left. And it's not working. And when you look at AEW and you look at the guys in charge of AEW, at least quite a few of them, the environment and the culture that they've been a part of for several years, do they really understand how to do that? And if they're going to try and just bring Japanese style here to the U.S., they are going to ultimately fall flat on their damn faces. It's not going to work. What is going to make you different and unique from WWE? What is going to make you destination programming? What are you going to do to actually change wrestling and move wrestling forward? What are you going to do to tie in the good things from the past and the good things from the present and find new good things for the future? I really wonder if, if there's an answer there. And I'm really concerned about whether or not these guys are going to be in over their heads, and specifically with Cody and the Bucks, can they get past their own BS for the greater good? Like whenever you hear about wrestlers being involved in like leadership positions within a promotion, you always get concerned that they're going to book themselves best. They're going to take care of themselves. It is natural. It's natural human nature to want to take care of yourself. I don't fundamentally disagree with that notion because we would all probably do the same thing. But there also is a fundamental point in time where it can't just be about you. Like in some of the early promotional stuff that I've seen for All Elite Wrestling, like they're trying to make Cody Rose the freaking voice of this brand. And no, you have Chris Jericho. You have Jim Ross. You have John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, who are all more well-known names than Cody freaking Rose. As a result, especially in the case of JR and Jericho, those are the guys that initially should be the voice of your brand. These are the guys that you should be featuring. These are the guys that you should be building everything off of. 
Because you're going to sit and go out there and try to market the Bucks and Cody Rhodes and Kenny Omega like they are a massive deal here in the U.S. or that they're household names. And you're going to be sorely disappointed because you're not. And you very well might never be. So can they get past their own bullshit? Can they understand that this is no longer just some fucking rib that you're playing on everybody and you're being the elite? Can you actually remove yourself and your emotions from the process here for the greater good? Can you do what is best for business even if it is not immediately best for you and your character? And I don't know what these guys. I, I just don't know. And if you're asking me if I have a lot of confidence in that, I think you know my answer is also no. And probably for a lot of you, the answer is also no. Like, you look at the photo shoot for TV Guide, you look at some of the other promotional things, the trailer that they show, they've got Cody Rhodes leading in and all this. Like, this is the first impression that you have. Typically, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Now, sometimes you can make a great first impression. Sometimes you can make a bad first impression, but that's not the worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world is to make no impression at all. Now, if you sit there and for that trailer, you have Jim Ross doing the talk over, Chris Jericho doing the talk over, being the first thing that you see, it instantly establishes your brand. It instantly gives you credibility. Cody Rhodes is just not that level of guy. It's nothing personal. That's just fact. And to sit there and package him and present him in a big way is just a fool's errand to me. There's a lot of things that have to go right here for all elite wrestling to not ultimately be a victim of its own hype and be gone in six months or a year from now. You know, a lot of things are going to have to change when it comes to Omega, the Bucks, Cody Rhodes. Like a lot of things are going to have to change and I'm not sure they fully understand just how much this is all going to have to change. And even just because they've been in wrestling for years and just because they've been wrestlers with varying levels of success does not mean when it comes to promoters and being bookers and writing shows and producing shows that they have the first fucking clue of what the hell to do. Because if they did, then a lot of other wrestlers would have the same thing. And how many more successful wrestling brands would they, we have there around the world? It can work. There is still a place for it. But I am worried that TNT might have been too much to bite off right away. Because I'm not sure that the audience is there to justify that primetime positioning for a long period of time unless things dramatically change. I'm not sure that these guys understand how to market and appeal to a larger segment trying to draw in new fans. You do not do advertising and promotion to bring in the same people you've already fucking got. Like if I took that TV guide photo shoot with my years of experience in sales and marketing and advertising, if I presented that to my bosses and said, hey, for our All Elite Wrestling account, Here's what I'm thinking. They would pick that shit apart. They would say, what the hell are you trying to establish? What the hell stands out about this? What are we even talking about here? And why would anybody care? And I couldn't answer anything to any of those because I don't fucking know. Because it doesn't solve for any of those questions. And then I would ultimately be removed from the account because they would have zero faith and confidence that I could do anything right here. Like just a basic marketing thing like you, you're... Biggest, most notable names. Like, even if you said, well, you're not going to include Moxley because of this reason. You don't include Jericho because of this reason. You included none of them in the photo shoot. It looked like a bunch of fucking nerds that brought along a couple of chicks and fucking all looking at Tony Khan like, who the hell is he? Like, it even be different if we're Shad Khan because at least people would know. They might know that it has to do with the funny mustache and he owns the fucking Jacksonville Jaguar. This is his damn son. Ain't nobody know who the hell he is. I really want this to work. I really, really do. And I think it can. But you are fooling yourselves right now if you don't think there are reasons for real concern here. Because there are. 
And that's why you need me, this angry wrestling man, because OTR Essential is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need, the one that will tell you the truth, even when you don't want to hear it.